All right, a bit of an odd shooting angle today. I've got this one new rack server. It's uh, made by Datto. It's the Cirrus 3 Pro, AKA the S3P4000. And essentially it's a good motherboard that I want. Uh, this is actually the second time this has happened. I've bought a random ass server because I specifically know it has a good motherboard in it. The uh, previous one you can take a look at uh, up here. I picked this thing up because the motherboard seems to be like pretty much the perfect FreeNAS board for a low power, just pure server. So I specifically wanted the motherboard from this unit. It's a 1U server and it's got four hot swap 12 gigabit SAS bays, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, it's a 1U. I really hate 1U cases because they always use 40 millimeter fans and they're always super duper loud. I try to avoid them whenever possible. This one only has three fans which poses a problem, believe it or not, because with fewer fans, you can get away with adding quieter fans because you have enough fans to make up for the airflow. Unfortunately, because this only has three fans, if you put lower speed fans in, such as the beautiful knock to a 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter, you actually lose so much air that you basically overheat the system. So with this particular one, I'm stuck with the loud fans that are pre-built. Obviously the layout is pretty standard for any one you, in this case, it does come with a riser, flex power supply, flex ATX power supply, main fans, and then you have all the drive cage in the back plane. It comes with dual 10 gigabit copper, onboard 12 gigabit SAS, PCI Express slots, eight core, 16 thread, uh, Xeon D, specifically the 1541. So it's a, a low power, kind of like souped up Atom chip, which, hey, for file serving, that's all you need. Four RAM slots. Uh, you can put in, I think, a max of 128 gigs. This particular one came with 48. I would like to bring it up to at least 64 because FreeNAS does like a lot of memory and it's going to be controlling over a hundred terabytes of space. So uh, yeah, when I transfer it, it's gonna be in a 24 drive system. I mean, I want as much memory as I possibly can. The three fans are quite loud and <laughs> they're in, they're in uh, positions to cool everything except for the disc controller, which I think is a little odd. The Intel onboard NIC and the onboard SAS controller both get incredibly hot and the, you know you get a lot of airspeed from these things but they still run really really hot so I'm going to probably 3d print something that can uh, cool them down I quickly whipped up like a prototype for uh, a little clip-on unit that you can stick a 40 millimeter fan on just to keep it a little cooler but uh, yeah prototype it doesn't exactly fit properly yet so <laughs> when i move it into another case i'll probably work out some kind of better cooling arrangement right now i have a one big compute a one big server that has 24 cores it's running a ton of virtual machines including free nas but it'd be nice to have free nas separate so as direct access to hardware and can properly monitor temperatures and stuff like that things get a little sketchy when it comes to fan control through a virtual machine so it can get a little little iffy so i want to specifically make it so that this is running off bare metal so this motherboard the case is a chenbro i believe it's the 14604 the case is great i mean it's it's really nicely built it has a hidden compartment with two tool list 2.5 inch bays Plus it has the aforementioned uh, hot swap bays for, for 12 gigabit SAS. So, and an optical drive, but you know, whatever. Uh, although, pro tip, you can get really cheap adapters that convert the, these bays into another 2.5 inch hard drive slot. So if you need an extra SSD, really quick, easy way to do that. This particular case is really good. It's just doesn't have a great amount of cooling with only three fans. You can install a fourth fan, but, oh, fifth. There's actually one over here too. If it had a couple more here, I think you could make a nice wall of lower power fans, but with only three in good positions or four, um, 
I don't think it provides enough cooling. I ran it with um, three Noctuas and it got real toasty, especially the controllers. You can get slimmer Noctua fans and then mount it here. And there is just enough space to get a little bit of airflow into this. I made the adapter very thin because of that. It's still not great. So I, I really wish they would use different heat sinks on these that you could easily attach a fan to, but unfortunately you're kind of limited. The CPU fan gets kind of loud. It's a Delta fan, but it's PWM controlled. So at least it slows down and gets a little quiet when uh, you're not doing anything. The power supply is from FFP Group. It's only a 400 watt, but it's actually very quiet. Very few Flex ATX power supplies are quiet. I'm not sure on the case. I might have to resell the case just due to the noise. There are four very nice trays that are compatible three and a half inch and two and a half inch drives. These are the two toolless bays and they hold the standard two and a half inch drive. Uh, this particular one came with Kingston 128 gig SSD and a one terabyte HDST. Uh, it's funny because the person on eBay said they were removing all the hard drives. They removed the ones from the hot swap bays and did not remove the hidden ones. I could see that there were drives plugged in in the uh in the picture which was kind of funny and i figured he wouldn't do that and he didn't so there's a little service tag thing here that you can pull out and it's got the little model number and the serial number one thing i noticed when i picked this thing up was just how beautifully all the cable looms are done everything just looks very nice in these cases fairly strict requirement in one u cases just because you really have to make sure you don't have any rats nests of cables uh, that will block airflow since it's so limited. You can see all the nice USB and interface cables that are running from the front header, the front uh, panel, and the SAS cable running to the back plane. Sorry, Connor P. I had to take out the motherboard and mess up your lovely cable looms. But it's for a good cause. It's one of the fans made by NMB, the 04028DA 12PEU. Yeah, almost an amp at 12 volts. You can tell this thing makes a lot of noise. And they have a little plastic shroud on them to extend it. Because uh, I guess they're designed to have a, a double fan arrangement as well. And they have little rubber vibration absorbers that don't really do anything. This I.O. shield looks a little off in terms of size. It might be a little small, but eh, I'll see if I can reuse it. The motherboard has a decent assortment of ports on it. Serial, VGA, since it's a server, they almost always have VGA to work with uh, KVMs. Uh, IPMI for remote management. Two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, as previously mentioned. It also has, uh, there's a variant of this that has SFP plus connectors for 10 gigabit. There's also one that has one gigabit as well. There's the A-Speed uh, AST 2400, which is the IPMI. Two 8X PCI Express slots. Uh, they're both capable of holding a 16X one. You can see there's a little cutout on this one, and this is a full size 16X slot, but they're only eight electrically. Two NVMe drives. Uh, these are actually provided one uh, X lane only. So they're not particularly fast for NVMe drives, but uh, this one at least supports the, or, they both support the uh, 110 millimeter ones that are more common in servers. They also support serial ATA. Yeah, that's the uh, the heatsink for the 10 gigabit network. So mine came with uh, two sticks of 16 gigs of DDR4. Looks like they're regular memory. So I'll try and pick up some uh, ECC memory since this supports it. There's a bunch of six gigabit serial ATA ports. There's also a uh, SAS 3008 LSI controller. Uh, this was easily flashed to the newest version, just using the standard EFI flasher for uh, LSI controllers. I just updated it to the newest version. It easily supports IT mode, so it functions as an HVA with no uh, hardware RAID to interfere with FreeNAS or anything, which is great. It uses the mini SAS connectors, which uh, I don't actually have anything that uses those aside from the back plane in this board uh each one carries four sas 16 bit 16 gigabit connections so uh you can just use one cable to the back plane and you could actually run a cable out to uh, an external connector if you wanted to to hook up another case full of drives which is something i considered if not for the fact that this is such a loud case 
There's also an internal USB 3.0 header, which is great if you have a little flash drive to boot your uh, operating system, USB 3 headers, you know, your standard motherboard stuff, but it's really nice on a, such a low power uh, 45 watt CPU to ha uh, that has 16 threads to have uh, all these connections. Oh, cat fur already in the server, great. And yet, yeah, this is the LSI controller. Like I said previously, it gets real hot. Fan controllers, uh, I don't know if they all have it, but I noticed that when I disconnected one of the fans while it was running, it started blinking red, indicating which uh, fan port had a dead fan on it, which I thought was pretty nice. I mean, that's kind of standard fare on servers. I noticed they did, uh, they did brand it, Datto. Um, this, oddly enough, looks like a USB 3 header, but it, I don't think it is. Because these ones are specifically labeled as USB 3. This one's not. So this might be some kind of programming header. I, I haven't looked into it. I won't need that many ports when I put it into my system. But I just thought that was a little odd. So I should be able to run this completely as is with no external cards installed. Right now in my virtual machine, just for the FreeNAS server, I have three HBAs passed through to it which is kind of crazy. So um, I'm gonna start using expanders, which I'll, I'll actually show one of the expanders I'm gonna use, but uh, that'll reduce, reduce it down to just the onboard controller. And then I'll have one port going to the expander and one port possibly going to an external connector. What could be causing that shadow? Ollie. Yo, do you mind? <laughs> what? You're all jumpy. Alright, I guess Ollie's just going to hang out and help us do the video. Right, Ollie? Okay, please just keep the static to a minimum, okay? This is one of the SAS expanders that I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm actually going to use a couple of them because I'm going to have a couple servers. So I'm going to have a lot of drives. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these are just Dell server pools. And they are obviously aren't a card. They, uh, you know, like a PCI Express card. These are standalone and they run off this connector, which is actually a CPU power connector that you have to modify. You have to make your own connector because it uses five volt in addition to 12 volt. So, uh, you know, a few bucks, you can make a wire and uh, power it. And this thing is six gigabit to all of these ports. And you can just mix and match. Um, if you're not familiar with how SAS works, it basically has the ability to use like what's a, you know, like kind of an equivalent of a network switch. So you can run one of those cables from the motherboard in here or into one of these external connectors. And then all of these ports will share that bandwidth, which sounds bad, but hard drives are pretty slow. And six gigabit times four per cable is pretty good for hard drives. So, and, and I believe on this one, you can run two cables to it to double the bandwidth, but I'm not positive. Um, this uses a standard LSI chipset and it does get really hot. You can attach a fan to it quite easily by just looping it through the metal uh, studs that are soldered on and it'll keep it pretty happy. So uh, yeah, these are the secret to cheap expanders, these Dell parts. I'll post a link to whatever the hell the part number is. I don't remember what it, what they go by. They actually go by a few different names, but yeah, these things, these things are like 40 bucks. Uh, standard expander right now because of Chia and you know, just the hardware in general because of uh, the worldwide pandemic. <laughs> these things are 40 bucks instead of 200. So yeah, great deal. You just have to build a power cable and put it somewhere in your computer. Uh, I just, drilled some holes through the side of a case and stuck it to it uh, in, a, in another build.